Hello everyone. I see a lot of videos on YouTube from ex-Jehovah's Witnesses just bashing uh, the Watchtower. Now, what is interesting is that there appears to be many individuals who hold the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society to a much higher standard. And it's easy fodder for those who hate Jehovah's Witnesses to say, well, you see there, I told you about those people. Listen, most of what you're hearing about Jehovah's Witnesses on YouTube and even outside of YouTube is not true. How and why can I say that? Because I used to be a Jehovah's Witness. My experience as a Jehovah's Witness spans more than 20 years, not just here in the United States, but also overseas. So I've seen the operation of the Watchtower inside and out as a baptized Jehovah's Witness nationally and internationally. Now, it would be unreasonable to say that there are not individuals within the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society who got a bad rap. I'm pretty sure that there are many who did. But what makes the Watchtower different from the many Christian denominations in the world today? The men who run that organization, they are men. Blood flows through their veins too. They are imperfect. The elders within the congregations in the kingdom halls, they are imperfect men. They're not perfect. They have families. They have jobs. They have responsibilities. And it is very interesting to me to see how it is the Watchtower who catches a lot of heat. Now, I'm going to tell you something here. This is based on my experience. Almost all of my experiences as a Jehovah's Witness were good, positive. My issues were not with the people who are Jehovah's Witnesses. My issues eventually became some of the teachings, not all the teachings, but some of the teachings, namely uh, 1914, there being two classes of Christians, a select group of 144,000 who go to heaven and everyone else remains on earth, that the Watchtower Bible and Track Society is God's spirit-filled organization on earth, water baptism, and that's something Christianity engages in. So what I'm saying here is that the Watchtower Bible and Track Society really is no different from all of Christianity. They just believe different and they do things different. If you've ever been in a kingdom hall, you know what I'm talking about. It's not some dark and dismal place where there are sacrifices taking place. You don't see windows in most kingdom halls because they will be a distraction. There is a very serious educational work taking place within kingdom halls. If I had a choice to choose a neighbor or neighbors from among all of the air quote Christian groups, I would choose to live next to a Jehovah's Witness. Now, please understand me. That does not mean that I agree with all of the teachings. The Watchtower gets a lot of things right, but the Watchtower also gets some things wrong. But that is true of all of Christianity. You see, if something is built upon a false foundation, then everything built upon that fragile and false foundation is fragile as well. The prophetic utterances and teachings within the Watchtower are built upon the 1914 teaching. You see, within the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, it is believed that Jesus now reigns as king. He is king right now. I don't believe that. I used to. The evidence, the scriptural evidence is very strong that Jesus' 1,000-year kingdom is yet future. He hasn't taken kingdom power yet. If you've ever been in the kingdom hall and sat and listened to the meetings, you will notice that before a meeting, a prayer is given, and notice that the uh, person leading the prayer will conclude that prayer with in the name of our reigning King Jesus Christ because 
witnesses believe that Jesus now reigns as king. And with regards to the 1914 teaching, yes, so the witnesses go back to what's written back in Daniel. They've come up with the year of 1914 as being the year that Jesus returned his parousia, that he has taken kingdom power or that he took kingdom power in the fall of 1914. And that is also the year that World War I began. That 1914 is the beginning of the last days. I do not believe that. I do not believe that we are in the last days. I must hinge upon not what human beings say, but what Christ himself says. Now, Jesus teaches that Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, with regards to that day, that time, that time period, that no one knows, that even he doesn't know, the angels don't know. But such knowledge belongs only in the jurisdiction of the Father. Yet the Watchtower teaches that it knows something that even Jesus himself says that he doesn't know. If one drops down to Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, Jesus says there that uh, we are to keep on watch because we do not know on what day our Lord is going to come. So we don't know. It is not possible for humans to know that. Jesus doesn't know. The angels don't know. Only the Father knows. So the 1914 teaching and other teachings are the reasons why I quietly left the watchtower. I wasn't disfellowshipped. I wasn't kicked out. I do not have issues with persons who are Jehovah's Witnesses because I view them as being innocent children in a sense, who are obedient to the parent that feeds them. And this is true. Most persons who belong to a particular, air quote, Christian denomination, are they not loyal to that particular Christian denomination? Else they wouldn't be members of them. I don't make a separation in that regard with regards to those who are Jehovah's Witnesses because they're simply being obedient to those who sit in headquarters and who directs them through the many talks, information that comes down through the watchtowers and the awakes and the uh, assemblies and uh, the many other publications. You see, I'm spiritually mature not to come down on those witnesses. Many do because they need something. They need something to say, in their minds, expose them as being a cult. The Watchtower is no more a cult than the other Christian denominations, and that is the truth. Those who are ex witnesses have had a bout with the organization. They either did something wrong, and they got this fellowship, they broke the rules, for example, and they knew what they were doing when they did it. You see, when one becomes a Jehovah's Witness, there's a vetting process. If one makes the decision to become a Jehovah's Witness, they know what they're getting themselves into. And I think it's a disingenuous after the fact to get all in one's feelings as if they didn't know. They knew. Do not become a Jehovah's Witness if you are not willing to go along with the program. It really is that simple. But I know that there is a vetting process. I went through it. No one twisted my arm to become a Jehovah's Witness. And I don't regret that decision that I became a Jehovah's Witness. And the reason really is quite simple because I went through all of that. There are many good times and some bad times, not a whole lot of bad times. But I went through that because now I know the mindset of the Jehovah's Witness. I know the program, not programming, I know the program, I know the teachings. I know those teachings that I feel and believe that are skewed, not something Christ taught. And again, that's no different from the many teachings within the air core Christian denominations, such as the Trinity and the rapture and eternal torment and hellfire. Those are false too. We have to tell these many Christians that who belong to those denominations, oh no, those are true teachings. Why? Because you say so. You believe that they're true. Just like Joe's witnesses believe that the things that they believe are true as well. So why isn't what's good for the goose not good for the gander? 
See, it's subjective. So I don't have issues with Jehovah's Witnesses. It is the organization. It is the parent. It's the teachings. I would not be a true disciple of Christ if I hated persons, disliked persons who belong to the many different religious organizations. That would be improper of me. That would not be a following Christ in the example that he set. That would make me a hypocrite. That would make me prejudiced. And there's nothing that I hate more than being prejudiced, being discriminated against because of your, of your religion, your skin color, your ethnicity, your nationality. I just won't engage in that. What you hear me talking about primarily on this channel are the teachings within the many air quote Christian denominations and the men and some women who stand in the pulpit dispensing those false teachings. But even with them, I'm not being hateful. I'm not condemning them to some place of eternal torment. If you listen to my videos very closely, what you will hear is me say that people do and say things because they do not know. That was my case. When I was a Christian, I said things, I taught things because I believed that what I believed was true. But in hindsight, I simply did not know. And I know that there are billions of persons out there and persons who say that they're Christians who don't know. They're Jehovah's Witnesses, they're Seventh-day Adventists, they're Mormons, any other persons belong within those many thousands uh, of Christian denominations. They do not know. Even Jesus uttered this in prayer. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We can have a very strong and powerful belief that we know. We believe that we know, but others do not. You see, it's like a boxer. Oftentimes, the two opponents are being interviewed, and a lot of times you'll hear the question asked, do you believe that you can beat your opponent? And I find that's a, a foolish question because why would that person get in the ring with that opponent if he did not believe that he could beat him? Of course, he believes that he can beat him or her, else they wouldn't step into the ring. So likewise, persons who belong to any of the many religious groups and denominations would not be in those groups if they did not believe that what they were, are in is the truth. They may believe that what they're in is the truth, but is indeed false. And it's for that reason why I will not touch religious organizations, never again, because I believe that they are enslaving. They are enslaving of the mind. They will turn you into someone that you might not like eventually. I did not like what Christianity and even Watchtower was turning me into. Now, the Watchtower wasn't turning me into a bad person, but what it was doing, it was acclimating my mind to view anyone who was not a Jehovah's Witness as being an outsider or a worldly person. Jesus never did that because Jesus realized and recognized that people are like sheep without a shepherd. They do not know what they're doing. And I didn't like that. I did not want to think in that manner. But it is not just the Watchtower that does that. On a very, very large scale, Christianity does the same thing because it teaches that if you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to a place of eternal torment. What's the difference? The Watchtower teaches that those who are not witnesses are outsiders, that they're missing out on eternal life. Christianity within her many denominations teaches something that's very similar, that if you do not accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to be punished for all eternity in a hellfire. See the similarities? So it would be disingenuous and showing prejudice if one comes down on one religious group but lets the others off the hook. They're exempt from criticism. And I simply will not do that. You see, I'm not consumed with Jehovah's Witnesses and the Watchtower, an organization that I was a baptized member of for more than 20 years. I'm not consumed with any of it. 
But I see many individuals out there who are ex-witnesses and those who are not witnesses, but who just need something to uh, say, see, I told you. If a Jehovah's Witness sneezes wrong, someone's going to be on top of that, I guarantee you. But I'm telling you honestly, most of what you're hearing about Jehovah's Witnesses is not true. It is simply, I believe that many persons are threatened by witnesses because most witnesses are well rounded. They're not off the hook. A lot of the things that they believe Christian organizations have an issue with. Witnesses do not believe that Jesus is God. And I agree with that. They believe that he is the son of God. The Watch Tower doesn't believe in the Trinity and the rapture and that hell is a place of eternal torment. I agree with those things. As I said earlier, the Watch Tower gets some things right. I don't like dragging a red herring, ignoring those teachings and focusing on the organization or the people within them. And that's what a lot of ex-witnesses do and those who don't like witnesses do. They do not address the true teachings within the Watchtower. They simply dismiss them as being false without providing a justification. And that is the truth. I feel very comfortable talking to any person within any Christian denomination about Christ's teachings. I know the Bible, but the Bible is not my focus. That's a book that men gave a name to. God sent us his son. God didn't send us a book. God did not tell us to listen to a book. He sent his son. If God wanted us to listen to a book, he would have told us so. This is the book that I've put together for you. Read it, follow it. He didn't do that. Long ago, God did not send a book to the enslaved Hebrews in Egypt. He sent Moses, a person. Likewise, God did not send to the world today a book. Men did that. God sent his son and God commanded us to listen to his son as written in Luke chapter 9, verse 35. If we are to be true followers of Christ, we must rise above the thinking of this world and not get caught up in this back and forth. We see it on YouTube every day. These are men who call themselves preachers and pastors and apostles acting like kindergarten children fighting in a sandbox, calling out who I thought were their Christian brethren, calling them liars and false and this and that. It simply shows how divided Christianity is. But you know where you don't see that on an international scale? You don't see that division within the Watchtower Bible and Track Society. I can go to a kingdom hall in Thailand, in the Philippines, or any country in Africa where there are kingdom halls and the programs are the same. The same Watchtower is being studied, the same publications are being studied as the ones here in the United States. The only difference that you will see is the languages printed on those publications. So if a Kingdom Hall here in the United States is studying the uh, January 15th publication of the Watchtower, a Kingdom Hall, say in Thailand, the Philippines, or Azerbaijan, or elsewhere, they are studying that same January 15th publication of the Watchtower. So you don't see divisions like that within the Watchtower. And the many who are ex-witnesses they don't tell you that. They're not going to tell you all the good stuff. They're going to tell you the bad experiences that they had. And they are not going to tell you the whole story. And again, I am not saying that there are those who are ex-witnesses who did not get a bad rap. Because people are people. Those who run slash lead the organization are imperfect men. Now, that's another thing. I don't believe in this governing body and the, the 144,000. I don't believe the 144,000 have been chosen yet. I believe that's yet future. Many hundreds of years yet future. I don't believe that the 
contents of the book of Revelation have had a start of fulfillment. I've done videos about this. I've written articles about it. And this wasn't because I just made the decision to go against what the Watchtower teaches on this. I'm well studied. I've studied all the publications within the Watchtower. I used to lead, in some instances, uh, book studies. I've studied the Watchtower's uh, Revelation, the Grand Climax book, and the many publications prior to that that spoke about Revelation many, many times. And at that time, I wasn't looking for loopholes. It was only after something quietly led me out of the watchtower, and I believe it's my God and my, uh, my Lord, that I realized that the contents of the book of Revelation hasn't had a sort of fulfillment yet. Yet, even the watchtower has fallen victim, just like the rest of Christianity, to believe that fulfillment has been occurring for quite some years now and is occurring now. I'm not seeing that. As I mentioned earlier, the Watchtower believes that it was in the year 1914 that Jesus returned, or that was his parousia, invisibly. Not that Christ's return was a visible event on the earth, but he, he has taken kingdom power invisibly in heaven because you, you can't see anyone in heaven. That's a spiritual realm. But they believe that he reigns over the earth as king from heaven as I speak. I don't see evidence of that. Because if Christ was a new king, and he's ruling right now, why are things so bad? And why are things waxing even worse? A new king would come in and clear it all out, wipe it all out. This is my kingdom. I'm not gonna tolerate wars over here and murders over here and all the bad things occurring. I understand the teaching within the watchtower that he will rule in the, uh, in the midst of his enemies. I understand that, I get that. But that doesn't mean that he has taken kingdom power. If one reads from Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse 3, his disciples ask him a question about the sign, not signs, but the sign, a single event that would signal his return and the end of the age. What many don't get, and even Watchtower don't get this, I didn't get it until I asked God about this, the end of the age, what age is that referring to? Christ age, his future 1,000 year kingdom. What is its age? It's a thousand years. So his disciples were asking him what would be the beginning that is the start of that and the end of that. They asked for the sign. Jesus goes on to talk about a great many things, but he didn't give them the answer right away. It was only until we get down to Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, that Jesus answers their question. He says that the sign appears in heaven. And many miss that too. Many within the watchtower miss that. Because Jesus tells us that the sign is seen in heaven. Not in the heavens. The sign is seen in heaven. You and I can't peer to heaven. So this sign will not be seen by anyone on earth because it appears in heaven. And if one goes to Revelation chapter 12, verses one and two, we see the sign mentioned again, appearing as a woman, where? In heaven. And the earth and the moon is beneath her feet. And that woman is pregnant. That woman is about to give birth to something. Birth to what? Birth to Christ, yet future, 1,000 year kingdom. Jesus spoke about those birth pains at Matthew chapter 24, I believe at verse six through verse eight, somewhere in that area. Many miss this. So no, I don't disparage Jehovah's Witnesses, but I will engage in conversations with them and I will never go back into any religious organization again because I don't want to be controlled like that. I've already come out of them and I have gone to the person of Christ Jesus, the one that my creator and your creator commanded us to listen to and who Jesus himself says we are to remember ourselves with. So I don't follow religions. I don't follow Christian or religious organizations. I follow Christ.
I am his disciple. I'm not a disciple of the Bible. I'm not a disciple of religious organizations. None of them. This is R. Jerome Harris, the disciple. Thank you for listening.